up Giants fans, it's your boy No Name back at it with another video. I hope y'all had a good Memorial Day, you know what I'm saying, hope you had some barbecue, went to the beach, spent time with the family, all that, hope you guys had a good time. You know what I'm saying, as for me personally, it was just all about the food, I tried to eat that barbecue and that fried chicken. But that's enough of that, let's get back to some OTAs report. Day number four started back today, Tuesday, May 28, and it did rain again today, which uh, is funny because the last time it rained, they played indoors, but Coach Sermer was like, nah, we're going to put the guys outside today. It wasn't heavy rain as it was the last time, so it was a bit of a drizzle. He, tried, he tries to get the team used to the weather, I guess, which has weirdly been... Uh, our team has been lucky in the sense that we've had extremely bad weather and very bipolar weather like we've had sunny days windy days rainy days uh, just dry days hot days like all throughout OTA so far it's given the team like a real just range to practice and get used to and not to say I hope it continues in the summer because obviously that it's just a bad sign but in terms of getting the team used to bad conditions, I mean, it works out for us. So, thank you, crazy New York weather. Doing something good for once. But, let's get right into it. Uh, just not really um anything completely noteworthy today. Um, relatively quiet practice day. I got just like three or four main points I really want to talk about. First one being Daniel Jones. This guy right here. I mean, let's all be honest with ourselves. We're probably going to hear his name. A million times within the next coming months and then 10 million times if he does become the successor to Eli over the next 10 years so but Daniel Jones he's been taking reps with the uh, third team throughout the OTAs and sometimes second teams but today he was really battling it out with Alex Tanny for second team reps Acqu according to coach Sermer he's like uh, Daniel's getting better and better every day that's a quote straight a quote from coach straight from him and that's a that's a really good sign. I mean, he moved up fairly quickly, and his playing time is increasing each, every time they see the field. It does beg the question: Hey, is it possible for Daniel to o actually overtake Eli's starting spot by the time the season comes? To that, I say no. I mean, it's not as far fetched as a lot of people think, considering how far he's moving up the depth chart. But then, when you contextualize things, I don't think it would be hard for the sixth overall pick. And for what the coaches and the general managers saw in their eyes, the best quarterback in the draft class to move up from playing with third string guys. These are guys who never really see the field that much if they do with some special teams. But it's nice. It's really great to see that Daniel's improving and that he's getting uh, acclimated with tougher competition. I do hope to see him get some reps in with the first team guys. I want him to see... I want to see him play with Saquon, Shepard. I want to see him go against Jenkins, Lorenzo Carter, BJ Halo, all those guys. I want to see how he goes up against them. I want to see how he fits in with our offensive scheme, the real offensive scheme for the first string guys. Obviously, it's not like those I want him to replace Eli immediately because I still think at this point in their careers, Eli would be the way to go for now. Moving on. We have Corey Ballantyne, he has always, not always, but he's been spotted at OTAs throughout the three days there, not really in a physical role, but now he finally returns to the field in a physical role. Once again, I said this in the last video, I'm happy for him, I'm glad to see that his physical recovery is coming on well. Right now, he's seen competing for uh, more of like a depth chart type of role in the secondary. I, I want to see him on special teams, because for those of you who don't know, Ballantyne had, um, like, I think four or five blocked kicks on special teams in one year and that's quite frankly amazing um or maybe over the course of his, uh two years there at, at washburn but either way he's been a great special teams t player if not um a great backup for our defense i mean i've said it time and time again i think a secondary coming into this year would be our strongest part in our defense so whether he's there as a depth guy or whether we have him on the field as a special team guy i would be happy just pray and hope that his mental recovery is as good as his physical recovery. Prayers out to Corey Ballantyne. Going back to um, going into a little bit more secondary stuff here. Uh, Janoris Jenkins was out because of a graduation within his family. And real quick, I want to address the fact that uh, while I was uh, getting some information here, you know, doing some scouting to get the OTA report out to you guys, there was an article titled "Obviously Clickbait." Janoris Jenkins not spotted at Giants practice. 
and I mean, I bring this up because it's obviously obviously trying to make a Giants player look bad. It's trying to make Janoris Jenkins look bad the way they frame the title. He's not there at the voluntary practices, but he was before. Is this a sign he wants out? You know, like the media does this all the time, and they do it a lot with the New York Giants. A lot more in recent months considering the quite controversial moves our general manager has made. But, I mean, it's like... It's like, we got another dysfunctional team in New York. We got other dysfunctional teams across the league. Like, they just, they love to hate on us, guys. I mean, this is a sign that we're doing something right. Like, you ever play a video game? When you come across your enemies, you know you're going in the right direction. We're obviously going in the right direction. Come on, now. That, some of you are going to call me stupid for that, but I, I don't really care about that. But because um, Jenkins was out... DeAndre Baker and Sam Beal were getting a lot of first team reps and Sam Beal has really been impressing me throughout these OTAs because he's outperforming my expectations of him actually putting up a battle against DeAndre Baker, our first round pick, the guy we traded up to get, the guy who haven't, hasn't given up a touchdown in his college career for the past two years, the definition of a lockdown corner, quite possibly the best cornerback in this year's draft. Sam Beal, a guy that we got in the supplemental third round draft last year is giving him a run for his money and don't be surprised if this continues that we see uh sam beal out there across janoris jenkins instead of uh deandre baker i find it really exciting and i find it really surprising but either way man like i said before iron sharpens iron so i hope to see that both of these guys are just turns out to be great so that eventually when jenkins leave we got two stud cornerbacks back there and another thing that surprised me is that um Grant Haley is actually holding down the nickel corner, uh, nickel corner position extremely well. I really thought that um, that Julian Love was going to come in and uh, not exactly take it out of his hands, like taking candy from a baby. But I thought by now, Julian Love would have sort of established dominance or shown that he's the better player of that position. So it's another great find from last year that we had an undrafted free agent in Sam Beal, who was actually rated by PFF. The second best rookie cornerback, only behind Denzel Ward last year. A lot of people don't know that. An undrafted free agent that the Giants got. And he's he's outperforming so far our fifth round pick in Julian Lover. Was he our fourth round pick? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Fourth or fifth. And once again, iron sharpens iron. It's just, it just seems, though, as though Love isn't putting up much of a fight right now. I mean... I know they have him out there work, trying to work as safety and whatnot. I know Gedimo says he has them trying to work as safety. But Love's natural position is the nickel corner. So I, it would be interesting to see how that plays out in the end. In terms of interceptions today, we had uh, an, the undrafted free agent Henry Tolliver. He had a deflection from pass from Daniel Jones that was intended for Corey, from Corey Coleman. And then later, he actually intercepted a pass that went off the hands of Darius Slayton. Which is another thing I'm concerned about. Slayton has had inconsistent hands since he came in, since rookie minicamp and now in OTAs. I really hope that improves. I mean, like I said, as of right now, the best thing I expect from him is to be our third string guy. Right now, it's probably a battle between Coleman and um, and Col Corey Latimer. I mean, I mean, Cody Latimer, Corey and Cody. It's probably a battle between them. I mean, it would be a shame if that pick kind of goes to a waste. And I'm not trying to say that Darius Slayton was a waste of a pick. But I want to see better hands from him. You can't just have all speed and not know how to deal with it. Uh, of course, the positive here is that the secondary is playing amazingly. Antoine Bethea also had an interception on Eli. And Lorenzo Carter actually had a deflected pass also on Eli during the first team reps. It was supposed to be a... Um, a screen pass to Saquon Barkley and instead they try to fake it to Evan Ingram but then Carter using that knowledge of his went and knocked it right down before it even got to Ingram so we also got our linebackers in here doing work um, in the passing game which I'm always happy to see. Lorenzo Carter by the way I expect him to have a really good second season I, I want to see somewhere between seven and ten sacks from him and depending who's out there on the other side uh, Marcus Golden is looking a lot more likely than I would have liked originally. I don't have a problem with him being there. I just thought that O'Shane Zimenez would have been, I don't know, I, I would have just liked O'Shane to start over him. I like O'Shane as a player more, and also I, I just like guys that we draft more. So if we could get seven to 10 sacks out of Lorenzo Carter in this coming year, and then seven to 10 sacks from the other guy in this coming year, and plus we have immense interior pressure, our defense should be fine, because our secondary is already, already extremely good.
And speaking of pressure, let's move back to the offensive line and how they performed against pressure uh, this practice. The offensive line, they went up in a lot of blitz situations and they did a really good job of protecting Eli and just setting a clean pocket for Eli. Obviously, I'm talking about the first team reps here. So they defended really well against the outside and inside pressure. We had a little bit of a competition, which we might see continue throughout the year until the season starts between Spencer Pulley and John Halapio which I kind of expected because Pulley was a really good, I won't say great, he was a good um, starting center for us towards the latter half of the past season, and John Jalapio in the two games that we saw him was extremely good, so it would be nice to see those two guys duke it out. I would honestly love uh, Jalapio to start and keep Pulley on there as a backup because with Jalapio's injury, there's always a, ch a chance of re-injury, and it's nice to have a guy that you know could come in and fill in the spot without really uh, any difference in the offense. Of course, once again, putting things in context, because of OTAs, uh, there are certain rules applied to contact, and you're not really allowed to tackle anybody to the ground or anything like that. It would be hard to get a definite answer and to see definite progression along the offensive line. It's still good that they provided a clean pocket, but keeping it in context, you know, keeping everything in context. And of course, we're still without uh, Nate Solder and Mike Remmers, so. If this carries over and our tackles are performing good, that's actually a surprise, but I don't, I don't expect it to carry over. I expect this to be only this good with our two starting tackles. The very last point I'd like to talk about is something that I brought up in now the last two videos. Um, energy in the defensive back room has been great and now they're bonding even more um, specifically through communication both on and off the field. Jabil Preppers and Antoine Bethea have been getting along really great. They've both been lined up against Evan Ingram. I said last time that I think it would be great for Peppers to be lined up against Evan Ingram, and if he could keep up with him, that's a good sign for us. Same thing's happening with Antoine Bethea in this practice right here, and they're, you know, like I said, they're communicating on and off the field. They're trying to make sure they're getting plays right. They're trying to get the defense together and all that, and that's just great to see. It's great to see that these guys are actually gelling together. I, I'm, I'm really excited about this secondary, guys. I really hope that all this pays off, um, all this carries over into the summer training camp and then the preseason and the season itself. So that's all I got for y'all today. OTAs recap day number four. Um, let me know what you all think. I, are you guys are excited about this defense? Are you excited about the offense? Is there something I missed that you would like me to talk about? Anything you want to know, anything you want to say, put it down in the comments below. I'm out. You're...